Terry Calvisbert is a typical teenager. Nothing holds her back and she's just so strong-willed. She's also one of only a handful of people worldwide to survive 90% burns. When Terry was just under two, she was trapped in a house fire accidentally started by her mother. But her injuries haven't destroyed her spirit. Everyone should not think about what they look like. It's all about the personality, really. <laughs> this is the story of how pioneering medical treatment saved Terry's life. I've never seen anybody with extreme burns to that degree. None of us expected Terry to survive. And it's the story of how, as a teenager, she's taking her future into her own hands. I want to do something for no one could got this. Terry's mother, Julie, speaks for the first time about why she stopped seeing her daughter after the fire. I couldn't live with myself. I couldn't live with what I'd done, knowing it was my fault. And Dad Paul, who's brought her up on his own, has to get used to Terry having boyfriends and going abroad on her own for the first time. She's my daughter, so I'll be naturally protective, but I probably am a lot more protective than normal. My dad don't really know to worry about it. Could have gotten myself. So what's going to happen as the girl with 90% burns grows up? You're a taller. <laughs> An ordinary street in a quiet suburb of Ipswich is home to an extraordinary teenager. Here you go. <laughs> Terry Calvisbert lives here with her dad, Paul, and stepmom, Nikki. Oh, well, mind his eyes. When Terry was just 22 months old, 90% of her body was burnt by a fire, which started in her bedroom. Although Terry's appearance makes her unique, she's just like all her friends. She's into makeup, texting, and she's got her second boyfriend in less than 12 months. I'm going to see him last night with Matthew, who is my boyfriend, and I'm thinking out with him for nearly two months. I don't think he knew that I really fancied him, that I did. And then when I eventually told him, then we started going out. Now she's 14, Terry wants more independence. I would like to have a bit more freedom because I would like to go out with my friends and it's not really the best to go out with your dad. It's a bit boring. Many parents find it hard to give their teenager the freedom they want, but for dad, Paul, it's especially difficult. She's my daughter, so I'll be naturally protective, but I probably am a lot more protective than normal but I'm not half as bad as what I used to be. I wouldn't let her go anywhere, even run around the garden. I wouldn't let her do it on her own. But I'm gonna have to start letting her do more things on her own. That's the only way she's gonna learn. Hopefully, I'll learn to cope with it. For the first time in her life, Paul is letting Terry go out without a chaperone. Hello, love. <laughs> Terry met Matthew through a club that helps young people with disabilities gain confidence. He has a mild form of autism. My first date with Terry. I love her for who she is. Why do you to turn my phone off? Turn your phone off. Like, when we get in there. <laughs> it's a big step for both of us. For her to leave me and also for me to leave her. I'll be sitting there worrying for the next couple of hours, waiting for her to come out again. That scared me a little bit, that too. <laughs> I think she'll probably draw it more than what I will. I love you. I love you too. Paul is protective of his daughter because he came so close to losing her. After the accident, Terry was admitted to the specialist burns unit at Chelmsford Hospital. Peter Javolski was the surgeon on call that evening. Terry had a very extensive and deep burn affecting 90% of her body surface area. And those areas would include uh, her face, her scalp, 
her neck, her trunk, the front of her body, uh, the back of her body, the posterior trunk, both her upper limbs uh, and both her lower limbs. 75% of deaths caused by extensive burns are as a result of wound infections. So all Terry's damaged tissue was cut away. Now I'm a firm believer that removing dead burnt tissue saves lives in this type of injury. And at the time, we were one of the few centres in the world being that aggressive in terms of surgical treatment. Using newly invented artificial skin, Professor Javolsky replaced all Terry's burnt tissue. This is what saved Terry's life. The artificial skin is made of collagen, which is the ba basic building block of the human body, and a bit of silicon on the top. And it essentially recreates the bottom layer of skin, the dermis. <laughs> this is Terry at the age of four, after 60% of her skin had been replaced with the artificial substitute. Bath time with her community nurse reveals the devastating effect the fire had on her body. Her nose, hair, hands and ears were all destroyed and most of her skin was seriously damaged. Little one on this cheek. <laughs> Hello, Terry. How are you? Twelve years after her treatment began, Peter Javolsky still looks after Terry. I think if we can just have a look at your tummy, would that be OK? Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the difference of here, your normal skin. Uh, and up here is where we've used our artificial skin. And unfortunately, we had to remove quite a lot of the fat there. And then that hasn't really regrown. So there is a bit of a, a difference there. Terry has endured around 40 skin graft surgeries. As she grows, her artificial skin will need replacing because it doesn't grow with her. But if we look at your arm, artificial skin has stretched. But we've had to put some more skin in on one occasion already. And I think as you get a bit older, we might need to put a bit more in there to allow your arm to grow in that. Terry was one of the first patients that we treated uh, using those sort of techniques, which we've continued successfully to do. So we've all grown up together. She's, as it were, a member of my extended family. She is cared for and cared about by large numbers of people uh, here in the hospital who were involved in her care at the time. Terry's medical team is a constant part of her life, but her mother isn't. Not long after the accident, Julie stopped seeing Terry. Now, Julie wants to talk about the fire for the first time. <laughs> Terry Calverspurt was so badly burnt in a house fire when she was a toddler that nobody thought she would survive. Excellent. <laughs> But today, she's reached a huge milestone, her 15th birthday. What did Matthew get you for your birthday then? Oh, yeah, one direction too. And chocolate. <laughs> this will be a big year for Terry, as in five months, she'll be travelling to America for the first time to meet other teenage Burns victims. And I have witnessed of that. <laughs> hug, hug me, Terry. Oh, what, did you pick Terry yeah. up in here? Oh, that's lovely. In here is Terry's birthday cake. It was a, it's identical to the one she's got, same colour and everything. You know, she won't put it down. It's always going off every five minutes. It's enjoying the party, and it is really nice to have a family get together. But there's one member of the family who isn't here, Terry's mum, Julie. She stopped seeing Terry shortly after the accident, which left her daughter with devastating and permanent injuries. This is Terry before the fire. She had blonde hair, blue eyes, a round little face. <laughs> Just gorgeous. <laughs> Two months before the night of the accident, Paul and Julie split up and she moved out. But on the 21st of November, 1998, Paul was at work, so Julie was back at his flat, trying to get 23-month-old Terry to sleep. This is the first time Julie has spoken publicly about that night. I took the cigarette in the bedroom and just 
put it on the side of the unit. She just would not settle. Um, and so I thought, right, I'm, I'll leave her to it. She's going to scream. She'll wear herself out. She'll go to sleep. I didn't intentionally leave the cigarette there. It's just a case of I'm getting out of this room. The cigarette set the bedroom on fire, but Julie was in the living room and didn't realise what was happening. I think it was just her scream. It sounded different. That's what took me to the room in the first place. The smoke was so thick I couldn't see anything in that room. I phoned the fire brigade and I ran outside with a torch to try and smash the bedroom window, but didn't make a dent in the window. Um, and I, it was then I tried to run back in, but one of the neighbours stopped me. Um, and then I, I remember hearing sirens. By the time the fire brigade arrived, Terry's cries from inside the flat could no longer be heard. While she was screaming, I knew she was OK. Um, I'll just never forget when I realised that Terry wasn't screaming anymore. Um, when I couldn't hear her. This is the first time Julie has returned to the scene of the fire. All I can see is just black everywhere. And the, this road was just full of fire engines and police cars. When firefighters went into the bedroom, they found what they thought was a doll in the cot. It was Terry. I've never seen anybody with extreme burns to that degree. She was so badly burnt, I couldn't extend her neck to resuscitate her. And her body was totally rock hard. None of us expected Terry to survive. <laughs> Paul arrived home from work and was told Terry had been rushed to hospital. I just thought that perhaps they're just checking her over and that's it. My main aim was to get up the hospital as quick as I can. His daughter's life was hanging in the balance. You can see by the nurses' faces that none of them were expecting her to last. All her features are gone. Eyelids, nose, ears. She was so tiny, but so swollen. Even I thought, my God, you know, is this Terry? She had very deep burns to her face and her scalp where she'd actually burned the bones of her skull. Although the, the bone was still present, it was dead. And they're doing everything they can. They can't put nothing else more into her. And it is basically now it's up to Terry. No one expected Terry to live. But although the fire had damaged her body, It hadn't destroyed her courage or her fighting spirit. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Yes. Terry defied all odds and survived 90% burns. Mommy. Her family started to video her amazing recovery. As soon as she could physically get out of bed, you know, even to sit on a chair, she would do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's things like that which I knew then that she had the strength to carry on for however long it was. It was a relief for all of us, really. But Julie found it hard to cope. Accidents happen, I understand that, but then this accident wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for me. I mean, I can't go back and change it. It's a camel. Camel. I couldn't live with what I'd done knowing it was my fault. She got on with it and I, and I struggled. I mean, it says a hell of a lot about her. And I just thought, I can't go back, I can't see her like that. Her visits became more infrequent and eventually Julie broke off contact with her young daughter. If I wasn't there, then I couldn't see her. And if I couldn't see her, 
then the guilt might not be so bad. She wasn't seeing Terry at all. And she wasn't ringing up to see how Terry was. Easier sounds wrong, but I suppose it's the only word to use. It was easier um, to stay away. <laughs> but I got to that point where I thought, right, I've got to either do something. So I give up work then completely and actually started looking after Terry on a full-time basis. Oh, good girl. Paul spent every waking hour caring for Terry. It has created a special bond between them. She was like therapy for me and I was like therapy for her. So it was sort of like a two-way street on that one. Terry is at an age where she wants to know more about how she coped after her accident. It's the first time the teenager has watched the family videos, filmed while she was recovering in hospital. <laughs> you can hear a bossy you are. Hello. 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 I'm worse now. Yeah. <laughs> really good little chuckle as well. <laughs> <laughs> this was when you were trying to get to walk. So you barely need walking then. That would have been. <laughs> oh, get that. Oh, fellas. <laughs> See? <laughs> she wanted to get up and walk around, see people. I think she just wanted to get out of that room just to be nosy, really. Eight months after the fire, Terry reached another extraordinary milestone. She was well enough to go home. From day one, we thought she ain't going to leave us hospital. For her to actually come home was a very proud moment. Although the accident destroyed Terry's relationship with her mother, it created an unbreakable bond between her and her father. Me and my dad are really close, because he gave us everything to look after me. And I need to get one for Matthew. Matthew? Yeah. What a surprise. <laughs> just sit down and take the mic out of each other. <laughs> and he just, like, look out for me if anything goes wrong or anything. And he's just... Funny, Bernie. Really. Hey, Granddad. That's right. For six years after the fire, Paul brought Terry up on his own. I'll guide your hand, shall I? And although he had help from all of Terry's grandparents, he spent most evenings by himself. It, it did come a bit lonely. It was one of them things where I had to move on, hopefully find somebody else. But also, I've got to think of Terry's feelings as well because. I didn't want to confuse her by bringing somebody else into the family as well. Paul started internet dating and met Nikki. He quickly realised she was someone he wanted to introduce to Terry. When I first started going out with Paul, I was, I was a bit nervous about meeting Terry because I thought if she didn't like me, then we weren't going to go anywhere. And Paul was obviously nervous as well. And from day one, we really got on well, which is fantastic. You know, I couldn't ask for anything better. Paul and Nikki got married when Terry was 11. I can't imagine life without Nikki, because I talk to her about more stuff, and because Dad's a boy, he doesn't understand quite a lot of stuff that Nikki would understand. She probably talks to Nikki more than what she talks to me now. She hasn't forgotten about Julie, but she knows that whatever happens, Nikki's always going to be here. Terry really appreciates her stepmom's support when she has to go into hospital. Before her trip to America, she's having an operation on her hand to give her more dexterity, to grip and hold things. It's hoped the surgery will make her more independent, so she can do more tasks on her own, like unpacking her case. I'm nervous. You're not nervous. 
Mm. You've done it loads of times before. Not this one. They've done it wrong now. Yeah, but that'd be the same as this one, wouldn't it? I wouldn't be anywhere else but with her on the days that she has operations. Go down to the bone. Uh, and move that round. Yeah. And what have they got put in it? A pin. A pin. Yeah. <laughs> and how long's that pin got to stay in? 11 to 12 weeks. Fabulous. See, I do listen. You do, don't you? <laughs> we go down with her to the theatre. I'll go in with her and I just kiss her and say I love her because she gets really nervous still. Terry is having an operation to create a small thumb on her left hand. Let's have a moist swab. Well. First surgeon Manu Sood cuts through scar tissue around the base of her thumb to give swab. her more movement in the joint. It's a really solid scar tissue. Just to see to cut through. Oh, okay. Then he puts in a pin to hold her new thumb in place. But there's a problem. The new pin has stopped the blood from flowing properly. The rest of the hand is pink, but the thumb is, is now white because there's not enough blood going into it because it's all based on scar. I'll have to Mr. Sood has to adjust the pin so the blood can flow freely into Terry's thumb. Yeah, that's the only way. Yeah. At the end of the operation, Surgeon Peter Javolski repairs the wound with the same artificial skin he used to save Terry's life after the fire. You're so anxious when you're waiting for her. It's just horrible. So when she's back on the ward, it's just fantastic because you know everything's going to be fine then. It will take a couple of months to see if the operation has been successful. But the medical team hope Terry's new thumb will make her less reliant on other people. This is important because for the first time she'll be away from her family when she travels to America to meet other teenage burn survivors. It's quite hard to actually get a week away from them. <laughs> but is the 15-year-old really ready for her first trip abroad without her dad Paul or stepmom Nikki? Watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. Download Beely now. Teenager Terry Calvisbert is one of only a few people in the world to survive 90% burns. And she never lets her injuries stop her from living a normal life. Since she was three and a half years old, she's been in mainstream school. When I'm at school, I just get treated the time, really. I hang out with the nights all the time. We had to like, funny games, like Truth and Dare, and where day it's having to do stuff. I won't say what time of the day it's out. I say, I'm not doing a day, you am doing a good one. <laughs> Being accepted at school has given Terry confidence to have a go at everything. Ever since she played an angel at nursery school, she's always loved acting. My dad always down the drum, the queen. I love drama. Smile, march, big, big movements. Now Terry feels she's ready to take on a big challenge, performing in her senior school play. <laughs> but Dad is apprehensive. I am nervous about the play because I didn't know if she realised how big a scale this was going to be on. I want to be in a school play because I want to prove that I can do it and could all the nights you're in it. Everyone treats Terry as just another one of the cast. It's a testament to their man and to her that she just sort of slides in and fits in so, so nicely to what's going on. I want you, one, two, three, four, to come a bit further forward. A bit nervous, but going really good. It's just a bit um, hard at the moment because we've got to try and get everything right. So it's going really good. Okay, Terry, right, are you ready? Right, I need to lift your head up a bit. After two months of intensive rehearsals, it's the opening night. Come on. Right, if you want, do you want to put a bit of hairspray in it? Yeah. As the theatre fills up, the tension is building. Right, close your eyes. It's Terry's moment to face the public. 
an audience of 150 people, including one anxious dad. I'm not a dad that was, but still nervous. When I went on stage, I would like to really say keep, but once I got on there, I was fine, because I got into it. Everyone's looking at me, but it is for a good reason, because um, they're watching the show. I think the big achievement for Terry is the fact that she's actually got up on stage and done it in front of hundreds of people, you know. I know it's given me more confidence to see her actually do something like that. Well done. Yeah, done really well. <laughs> Everything that she wants to do, she just reaches for and does it. It's so, well, it's just heartwarming. It makes, it's just brilliant. Do the footprint like that and then do nothing different. <laughs> She'll be full of it now for days, weeks. My dad and that kicked out and I couldn't do it. I'll never do it. And uh, now I can tell them to that I can do it. So now Terry thinks she's ready for anything, within reason. I want to do something, but no one can stop me. Well, unless it's something bad, I'll just do that. I just, I don't care. I just do it. Good. Go have some sleep. We'll see you tomorrow. Do it again. Terry is back in hospital to find out if her latest surgery to repair her damaged hand was successful. Surgeon Manu Sood operated on Terry's left hand to create a thumb to try and improve her grip. May I have a little feel of the thumb? Is that all right? Getting tight there. It is, yeah. yeah. That one is not. Well, that's taken quite nicely and there's quite a nice screw yeah. in there. OK. Do you have any movement of the thumb at all? You do. Being able to make this tiny movement helps Terry's ability to grip. The surgery means Terry can now clean her teeth without help. Done stuff I can do, like bath my teeth and do my hair and all that. That's done stuff I still need help with, like doing my zip and buttons and that. When Terry is 18, she will have facial surgery. The one key area is her uh, nasal reconstruction. And I'd like her to be a little bit older because, unfortunately, if we do a reconstruction, say, now, in five years' time, it may not be big enough for, for the rest of her face. But although she's a typical teenager, Terry isn't concerned about her appearance. I have everyone should, like, not think about what they look like. So I never do. I always, like... As long as I'm happy and sort of that personality, really. Terry finds it easier to accept the way she looks because she spent a lot of time with other young burn survivors. She had jamas, right? So you've got and a nighty. This year, Terry has been invited to America to meet teenage burns victims in LA. Her father's given her permission to travel with a chaperone because he and stepmom Nikki can't get the time off work. I think Dad will miss you more than you'll miss him, to be honest. Yay! I think you'll... Um, I won't miss him. <laughs> you will miss him. I know you'll miss him, I know what you're like. <laughs> when I go out there, I can... It'll be quite good, cos when I'm meeting people and playing with me, really, I know I've got two to lay there and playing with me, that it would be, like, more interesting cos they're, like, in a different country and stuff. And then they might have more things that go on, so they will talk them about that. Terry's trip will be a huge test of just how independent the 15-year-old really is. Dad Paul has never let Terry fly abroad without him before, and he's worried about her being on the other side of the world. I'm not actually worried about the flight side of it. I'm more worried about the distance. You know, it isn't something where I can just hop on a bus or something and I could be there in half an hour. This is probably one of the biggest things that she's done. You know what he's like, he's a warrior, isn't he? He'd have drawn the queen. You would moan if he wasn't worrying about you, wouldn't you? Stop listening and go away. You won't even think about it. You won't, all right? Is that what's worrying you? 
You won't. You'll, you'll be absolutely fine. You mustn't have tears because it's just going to be such a good thing. If you want to ring us at any time, you just say, talk to Pat and see what we can, they can do. And you can contact us, eh? Just remember the time difference. <laughs> you don't want to be waking us up because you know what Dad's like if you wake him up early. <laughs> You silly old sausage. Alright. Terry has arrived in LA. She's never been this far away from home without her dad. The first day in America was scary because everything's so big down there. And it was nice to get away from dad, but I did miss him. Terry is travelling with a chaperone called Pat Wade. Pat runs the Burned Children's Club in the UK. The two first met 13 years ago, when Terry arrived at the hospital with 90% burns, and Pat was the nurse on duty. She was just such a strong child that even from that time, her character has, and her strength has made her what she is today. It's that strength of character which prevents Terry from ever complaining about her appearance. I'm not losing. As her hair follicles were destroyed by the fire, she wears a wig. Terry got her first wig when she was four years old. Where's the mirror? You look good. Have you got your brush? So you can brush it. It was a significant step in her recovery, as it helped Terry feel more like other children. You look so nice. The wig Terry wears now is made from synthetic hair, and she's had it for a couple of years. Don't that get in your nerves? No. Yeah. It is quite longer one side than the other, isn't it? Yeah. Who cut it? Hairdressers? No, I don't wear a nose. Not your dad? Oh, God, no. <laughs> I wouldn't trash them. Oh, good. I'd probably cut it all off. To ensure Terry looks her best when she meets the American teenage burn survivors, Pat has organised a surprise, a trip to one of LA's top wig makers. <laughs> Come on with me, Terry. Nazi Curtis is a hairdresser who started making wigs after losing her own hair. She especially made a wig for Terry with human hair. I personally have the highlights are really nice yeah. because it gives it a very natural, yeah. multi-dimensional so color. I'll, I'll I'll do yeah, I like this one. Can I take it off? Mm -hmm. okay. But, oh, perfect fitting. Oh, I am excited, Terry. I am so excited. I know this is going to stay on your head perfectly. Mm. I can't believe it. And right here, it has the scalp-like. So if people look from the top, it looks like the hair growing out of your own scalp. It's really lovely. It makes you look just so different, Terry. You like it, don't you? I knew you would. Wow. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You all right? I'll have to beat the boys off when we get back. <laughs> that is... I can't believe it, it's not even been done. Wow. Well. Oh. You look so, like, grown up. Just ready for the prom. <laughs> wow. It's really nice. Unlike other girls of her age, Terry has never been to the hairdressers. Don't stop smiling yet. And you're having your hair cut like that. <laughs> Terry's new wig is made from real hair, so it needs to be washed, cut, and styled. Terry, I think this is lovely. I think we should stop cutting. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Like, go like this, shake, shake. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well? Huh? Nice? Just nice? Uh, just nice? I don't know how to say it. Nice is good for a teenager. Nice uh, good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because so the other one was just yeah. awful, wasn't it? And Not awful, oh. I don't mean it like that. It was. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
when I got the new hair, I don't think that would change me that much. But now it just makes me feel more grown up. When are you going to do a top bit then? I'll do it next week. While Terry is growing in confidence, back in England, Dad Paul is trying to adapt to life without her. It's strange not having to worry about her. You know, not having to think, oh, we've got to be home by a certain time um, or anything like that. It's not a, a normal experience. I think even anybody with any children is not a normal experience. Where's Terry? Tomorrow, Terry is going to meet the group of American teenage burn survivors without her chaperone, Pat. Her dad, Paul, is worried about how Terry will cope alone. I think it's because she's further away, isn't it? So we, can, we can't just go around and see her or yeah. anything like that. Terry Calvisbert survived a house fire when she was a toddler. Despite her extensive injuries, she's grown into a confident teenager and at the age of 15 is on a trip to LA without her parents. Welcome to Universal Studios Hollywood. Today, she's meeting a group of American teens from the Children's Burn Foundation. Terry quickly bonds with Brianna, who is the same age and was also injured at the age of two when boiling water splashed on her legs, back and stomach. Like every week I would go in and get like shots to stretch it so they could pull my skin and cover my burns. So that's what they've been doing to my stomach and my back. So been, like for a year I've been having like four surgeries for a year. She has the record in surgeries in the whole group. <laughs> I got burned when I was seven. The adults have left a big lid of hot oil on the floor. And I ended up walking backwards at one point. I was just walking backwards and I tripped right over it. So I fell on my back into the oil and it burned everything. I have a burn here on my side and then the rest of my back. The worst one is over here. But aside that, the majority of them are hidden. Because obviously I'm burnt all over and stuff, so I can't really hide it. People do stare at me. But I just tend to ignore them because it's their problem yeah. kind of thing. It's not mine. Yeah, because it's just not, their pro it's not my problem, so I just let them do it. And, um, but it's better when you get the people who actually ask you and not just sit there and stare. Because then at least when you explain it to them, they're fine with it and then they don't, they understand kind of thing. When I was talking to other teenagers, they were like really open about what happened to them and that made me like talk about what, how the fire actually started. There's probably no one to blame, to be honest. And Sometimes I do look back and I do think, well, she shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have been smoking in the house anyway. Could that happen? But then I think some people do, so it's no different. It's not really her fault, really. It's no one's fault, you know what I mean? Terry is able to forgive her mum, Julie, for starting the fire but it's harder for her to forget that her mum then stopped seeing her when she was a toddler. Julie is in contact with her daughter by text and phone. Terry now has to decide whether she wants to meet her mum. Doing the work gave me time to like, think about if I actually wanted to see my mum or not. The next day, Pat talks to Terry about her mum, Julie. I've known you since the day you come to the hospital and know your mum and dad, especially your dad well. <laughs> like your mum also cared about you as well. And you know, she was really in a state when you come in, obviously. So it's not like she never cared that what happened to you. But again, whatever you do, it's, it's your decision. I don't want to show for at the moment. We've now got Nikki and dad and the rest of the family really. So it's also because I've got a lot of things and doing with school and stuff. Probably we'll see it once I've sort of mind out and stuff and then finish school. Yeah, that's good. That's positive anyway, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Terry's now at the age where she can now decide on her, her own path, really. 
and that's all we can actually do really. We know you can just guide her and that's the only thing we can do with it. We've always had the door open. She can always see her mum if she wants to. She's just got to go with whatever she wants. Mum Julie accepts that for the time being, Terry isn't ready to meet her. I'm always at the end of the phone anyway. I'm always going to be there for her. If she ever needed to see me, I'd be there. And it is a big privilege to say I am her mum and she is my little girl. I just want to, to always be there for her. Tonight is the climax of Terry's trip to America. She is guest of honour at a party organised by the Children's Burn Foundation in LA. Welcome, I'll introduce you. This is Berlin. Alexis and Walter and all these kids are part of our Burn Survivors program. Let's get a mocktail and start the party. At the party, Pat is surprised to see how confident Terry has become. She was just getting on with them. And to see her up dancing as much as she did, that was brilliant because um, it takes a lot to get Terry up dancing. It's always a special time when our kids can be together. For someone like Terry, who's so inspirational, she's such a strong and determined young woman. Terry became one of them so quickly. It was just wonderful. The American teenagers want to show Terry just what an inspiration she is to them. You are our very first honorary ABS member, and this is for you. It made me feel really special, and like, because my dad wouldn't know, I am um, felt more confident, and that I could do whatever I want. Back in England, with Nikki's support, Paul has come to terms with Terry's need to have more freedom. It comes time when we've got to let her do her own thing. You know, I think there's easier ways than sending us away at LA, but, you know, <laughs> but she has got to do her own thing and she's got to be independent. Terry's American adventure is over and she has to say goodbye to her new friends. In Ipswich, Dad Paul and stepmom Nikki are waiting for Terry to arrive home. <laughs> Seeing her come back, she's full of beans, full of confidence. She's raring to go. Um, so the trip has done her the world of good. So good though to see her back. Yeah. Is this your new hair? <laughs> Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? I'm going to say, it looks so much different. You've got all coloured, you've got highlighted, haven't you? Got, yeah. <laughs> that's gorgeous. For me, though, think... what's been really good is because she has done it without us. Yeah. She's, you know, that makes me sort of proud that that, that for her, has been a huge step as well. Have you got longer legs, then? You look taller. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as as me, look. How outrageous. She seems to have gone away a little girl and then from seeing her new hair and just the way that she is, she seems taller, she seems more confident. She's a little lady now, I suppose, and it's just fantastic to see her blossom. I love my dad a lot. She could have always been there for me. When I came back from America, it made my dad realise that I'm a normal teenager and I can do whatever I want and do what my friends do. Home sweet home. <laughs> Thank you.